12 seconds to go in the game. Niners lead by four. I guess I'll check this video. There's no way. What was it? What, 20 likes? Is that what I said? There's... What the sh- Woo! Hey guys, what's up? JOC back here again with my first ever mock draft. Minnesota Vikings mock draft 1.0 2018. Full everything. Seven rounds. Trades. Going all the way. Full details. So let's get into it from the beginning. Let's start out by talking through my thought process of how we got to my final product. So, let's start by seeing what picks the Vikings have in the draft this year. So starting off, round one, the 30th overall pick, and round two, the 62nd overall pick. In these two first spots, I think we have three overall positions that can use an upgrade right away. Two are kind of all in the same. We have an offensive guard and an offensive tackle. Really depends on whether or not the Vikings will slide Mike Rummers into a guard. And then, defensive tackle, Sheldon Richardson's good, but I think he'll be a one-year rental. Round three, 94th overall pick, and round five, 167th overall pick and around 6 204th overall pick. If you don't have a fourth, I kind of we have three six and no four. So I took that first six and kind of made that the middle picks. And these I have a cornerback kind of cornerback depth. Newman is a big wild card. I assume he'll still be back, but that'll be something we'll talk about later. Running back, we don't have running back three, and Latavius Murray probably won't be around a lot longer. And maybe a receiving tight end. Would be nice. Kirk Cousins loved receiving tight ends this time. Washington wouldn't be a bad idea to get a num number two receiving tight end. So we saw how bad. We, we haven't really seen a lot of David Morgan and Blake Bell in the receiving game, especially in the red zone. So it'd be like it'd be nice to get another guy in there for least competition. And then for the bottom three, round six, two thirteen overall, round six, two eighteen overall, and round seven, two twenty five overall. I have a kick returner would be kind of nice, a returner in general. I think it, Marcus Sherrills is good and dependable and been like a top five or so returner ever since. He's been returning kicks and punts for the Vikings, mostly, mostly punts. But I would like a little more speed and explosiveness back there and linebacker depth. And the, the last couple picks are just kind of there for depth in general anyway. So let's start off. We got the how I would look through this. Now let's start this baby off. Round one, 30th overall pick. The Vikings don't check, they stick right where they are. And he slides into our arms. The Vikings draft round one, offensive guard Isaiah Wynn. Isaiah Wynn is a fantastic lineman because he has versatility. He can play every offensive line position as he did in college. He played some tackle, played some guard, and he can also play uh, center if we want him to. He's a great run blocker and very good uh, pass protector. He's very good at staying on his blocks when he's engaged. He's married and he will be very good at just being a day one starter. He's very quick and can get up field. Very good for setting, setting up screens. Very similar to Pat Elfline. So I think he would compliment him and Elfline would do a very good job of getting those holes and those could be a centerpiece of Vikings offensive line for many years. Let's go around two. The Vikings have the 62nd overall pick, but trade up to the 36th overall pick. We have a trade. The Vikings move up to the 36th overall pick for defensive tackle Tavon Bryan. Tavon Bryan is an athletic freak, standing at six foot five, and he weighs 291 pounds, a little bit plus. That pounds is always kind of hit or miss depending when you weigh in, but. Very good when he's on. When he's doing his thing, he looks very similar to J.J. Watt, the athletic freak. But he's inconsistent and needs time to develop. He needs to craft his skills and get more consistent, which is perfect for the Vikings where they need him. 
to have Sheldon Richardson to be that day one starter and to be the guy to start all of next year so he can sit there, go on some rotations with him and Julio Johnson being very, very good backup defensive tackles and let's go. He could be a guy next to Linval Joseph for many years and he should be a monster and trading up is definitely worth it. The Vikings uh, gave away their fifth round pick and to the Colts. The Colts had two second round picks back to back so I would think they would be willing to trade one of them and since they have that right there in the beginning of the second round, come back to it, get that defensive tackle. Let's go Philly. Let's see who has the best defensive line in the NFL. And also LA Rams in that conversation as well. So now round three. 94th overall pick. We I had this down between two cornerbacks. Uh, Kevin Tolliver and Christian Campbell. Kevin Tolliver, a little bit more of that experimental guy. He's got a ton of talent. And Christian Campbell is that hard worker, not a lot of talent. But maybe a little bit better of a football player day one. So the Vikings, since we have two choices here, um, I say we trade down to the Broncos and get their fifth round pick, 160 overall. Now, it's a fifth because they don't have a sixth or a seventh, so they're willing to part. And they believe they have three fifth-round picks, so it's not a big deal for the Broncos. And the Vikings get moved down uh, <clears throat> to the fourth round at 106, and we pick up Kevin Tolliver, the six-foot-three corner, a ton of speed, a ton of ability, just needs to craft his skills. And who's better at that than Mike Zimmer? Having him at the number four corner, maybe number five. The thought process here, Vikings will get Newman. He'll be the number four. He'll be the number five. He'll pretty much be red short shirted for this rookie year. Won't play a whole lot. Then the next year, he'll be the number four corner. Still in a little bit of a rotation role. Give a guy a breather here and there. But... He'll have time. I think he's very similar to Trey Wayne's. Listen here, a, a, a scout say he has first round talent, but more of a third round grade. And since the Vikings can maybe get him to slide early in the fourth round, I would really like to take that a six foot three corner with speed for a depth number four corner guy. Let's go. All right, so now we go to the pick we got from the Broncos in that trade, and the Vikings will pick up running back from Iowa, Akram Waldley. Waldley is a very good mix of run and pass. He's shown very good receiving skills, which I think, hey, hey, hey we lost Jets, so let's replace him right away in the draft. So we go get that secondary receiving back. He has got running ability, so he's has some weight on him. He's 5'10", 200 pounds. He can really get after it. He can run between the tackles, run inside, outside. I think he's very good value in the fifth round. 160 overall in the draft. So I think he fills in that number three running back spot and can be the Viking long term number two behind Dalvin Cook uh, when Latavius Murray will leave in a year or two. <clears throat> Moving on, round six, 204th overall. The Vikings trade up to the 180th pick overall and for our seventh rounder and pick up tight end Troy Femigali from Wisconsin. Femigali is a very good balanced tight end. He's a good receiver, good blocker. Now, this, a tight end pick, depends on how much the Vikings really want to give Kirk Cousins that secondary tight end to catch balls from. I like uh, Blake Bell, but if we want that secondary tight end, he's a sixth round pick. He could very well slip onto the practice squad. So it's very least competition. We can see if he's a good enough receiver to make that third tight end spot and make your move with Blake Bell. But it's good competition here early in the sixth round, and I think worth a seventh, seventh round pick to move up and get him. Uh, 213th overall, we select center Will Clapp. He's played. Uh, guard and center his college career so he has versatility both ways he's a very solid run blocker needs work in the pass game kind of similar to Danny Sedora so I think he's a good depth guy in the interior offensive line and also has some decent quickness for offensive linemen here in the draft so again a good replacement if Pat Elfline would get hurt so I, I like that pick here and for the last pick the Vikings will draft 
Linebacker Zach Sitchie out of Wisconsin. Sitchie tore his ACL last year, but he has a mid-round type talent. So I think this could end up being a good steal. A, a very solid backup for years, and I think he could really replace Emmanuel Lemur. That's what I'm kind of aiming at here. And I think he does do that very well. He can play outside or inside linebacker, so a jack of all trades, uh, if you say. And I, I like the depth here. Very good value here for the very last pick. And for the draft. So there we have it. So for a recap, first round, the Vikings pick their guard for many years, hopefully Isaiah win. Next round two, the Vikings trade up for the defensive tackle freak Tavon Bryan. In the third round, the Vikings trade down to Denver and pick up cornerback Kevin Tolliver. And then, with the pick they got from Denver, they pick up running back from Iowa, Akram Waldley. And in round six, they pick up tight end Troy Famagali. And in round six as well, they pick up center Will Clapp. And with their very last pick, also in round six, 218 overall, linebacker Jack Sitchie. So there we have it. Was I right? Probably not, but I really do like those first two picks. I think they are very important. It would be great to have them. If you don't think Isaiah Wynn will quite be there when we are drafting, tell me in the comments. Do you, th do you like my draft? Do you like the way I went around it? I uh, shout outs to uh, WalterFootball.com. They had a good draft profile on all these different positions, which really helped me out. And then I kind of bounced that off the NFL's official draft profile. So I had a couple dual resources to really get me a, a good idea of where these guys would go. And uh, the Vikings don't need a draft. They'll, they'll probably draft the best available. That's the best way to do, obviously. But they have the ability to go, well, if it's close, he's not a lot better than him. We can go by position a little bit. And that's kind of what I did. So... Tell me on your thoughts on this in the comment section down below if you really uh, pay attention to college football a lot more than I do, which is a very good chance. Uh, critique me as much as you can in the comments down below. Otherwise, if you want another one, maybe a scenario where the Viking, where a win gets drafted earlier, tell me if you want that in the comments. If you want that, 30 likes. Drafts in two weeks, you better hurry. See you guys in the next Zero Z Vikings video.